Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining in tonight. Um, it's uh, something that we're all preparing for is what are we going to do about the fact that we will be taking our off our masks pretty soon. I've had my both of my vaccines, so that makes me feel good. But we still have to wear our masks probably for another at least three months and more likely six months or longer. But we will be revealing a little bit more and more um, of ourselves over the next few months. So maybe we want to get ready and, and perk up a little bit. So like these women, there's there's some bad things and good things about masks. One is if you have you know something you want to hide, uh, acne or just feeling tired, you could put a mask and sunglasses so you can hide um, what you feel terrible about under your mask. Or you can hide the fact that you've had a treatment by wearing a mask so it's a good time to heal from procedures. So today we're gonna to talk about why do we even care about how we look, a little bit of new information about human behavior, and then what steps should we take, baby steps or big steps? But the first question is why should we bother? Right now, we're all covered up, we're not going out. I know that you know on my weekends are, are a little uh, monotonous, um, you know, have dinner with just a few people. Um, and we're not traveling like we used to and all of that. So why, why do we even care? We're not going to weddings or social events, but soon we will be. California at least is gonna be opening up little by little more and more. And this is the face of 2020. It conveys a lot of what people have been feeling, stress, sort of anger, sad, tired. And you know, I think we've all had moments of this or just plain boredom uh, during this, year of 2020. And sadly, it's continued into 2021. I thought sort of magically this was a brand new year, but we still have some of the same issues that we'll be dealing with for a while. Um, and so this emotional downer is now extending into 2021. And we call it sort of COVID fatigue, triggered by this intense and prolonged stress. So we're tired of being isolated, too careful, worried about our family, our friends, our finances, scared or having tired of having to wear masks and tired of being on Zoom calls in which everything shows and you look terrible um, if you look at yourself and you go, oh my God, is that me? Um, and this stress sort of affects our, our healthy habits. We're probably not eating quite as healthy, maybe drinking a little bit more sleep quality hasn't been as good. So I think everyone is feeling, at least 75% of us is feeling a little down. The Zoom fatigue is sort of real. It's a heightened self-consciousness about your facial appearance because all of a sudden you're seeing yourself on Zoom. This was a picture of me. I was giving a lecture at, I've given several Zoom lectures and I was like, oh my God, I look awful or what's you know my hair. So, so you, you can't help but checking uh, when you're on Zoom, <laughs> you know, noticing some of your flaws. There's a research study at Harvard recently that showed that most of the time, if they track people's eyes, we go and check, like I'm doing right now, we check our own appearance, like how, how am I looking over there? Um, and 80% uh, of the time, our eyes track over to our own image. So I don't know if you all have had to be on a lot of Zoom calls, but it gets tiring having to like face your flaws all the time. And also we've had some time to perseverate on our flaws. You know, there's little things in our skin, a little more, bit more time because we're not doing as many activities to kind of look and maybe feel bad about what we're seeing in the mirror. And the monotony of today's life, every day is like blur's day where you don't feel like doing anything. And this has even affected my dog who, she just goes for a walk and just like lies down because she wants to see people and there's no one around. <laughs> but she's getting a little perkier lately. Now there's a field called neuroaesthetics and it's studying human nature, beauty, um, as it relates to aesthetics and art. So it's kind of this neuropsychology. And they, they found that when we look at a, a attractive face, there's an area in our brain that lights up. So just subconsciously, we're drawn to it, whether it just is part of human nature. And these um, experiments have been shown to be uh, true. 
Nancy Etkoff wrote an interesting book. This was maybe 10 years ago called Survival of the Prettiest. It's very interesting talking about human nature and beauty. And again, how we're drawn to it. Even infants at one month old, if you show pictures, they'll gaze at the more attractive faces longer. And she's shown Dr. Etkoff that humans do make these snap judgments. And if you show them pictures as is, is this person beautiful or trustworthy or competent, we make decisions about others in less than three minutes. And we are our own worst critic, as, as you know, especially we women. It's we rate ourselves negatively. We tend to look at flaws. You know, I might say, oh, I look so terrible. And someone else would say, no, you look fine. You know, we notice our own flaws more. So that, that's sort of something we should try not to do. But we know that attractiveness does a part well-being. It, it makes you feel better when you feel kind of attractive. There's a lower risk of depression. People are more successful at work. This has been shown in many um, studies that men with a strong jawline are more successful at work. We don't have to be like super, super beautiful, but attractive and interesting. And if you're flawed, you're often villainized, at least in TV movies, villains are most often scarred or disfigured. And this is starting to change where we don't want to make people who are scarred, we don't want to villainize them. Um, so that's just, again, part of our human nature that we can't quite help but care about because it's innate, it's in us. We also know that facial expression obviously um, connotes mood and emotion. It helps us to communicate with each other. If our mood is better, we're more attractive to others. Like if I'm happy and I'm telling you about these interesting studies about mood, that's better than if I'm sitting on my chair just barely um, talking about this. And I think something that COVID has done is kind of just toned us down and made us a little bit more boring. Um, and so, you know, we all know we'd rather be around someone like that super cheerful, cute baby than someone who's a little down or this, you know, I'm sure we all have friends that are kind of like Eeyore. Um, it's not that fun to be around and we're not drawn to those people. And a lot of it is this thing called facial feedback where we actually imitate each other's mood unconsciously. So if I look happier at you and smiling, then you kind of smile back at me. If we're kind of down, then others will respond to you the same way. And so this is all going on as we're in our day-to-day -day just communicating and interacting with each other. Dr. Gupta, um, she's a, a, a neuro, neurologist um, on the East Coast, and she's talked, she gave this great talk about how um, our health is not just physical, but it's mental and social well-being. Like if we don't feel comfortable, if we're not happy around other people, that affects our health. So looking better, feeling better, then others respond to us more positively and we then live better. So for older patients, this can be very impactful. I have a lot of patients in their 70s, 80s, 90s even, and they like to do a little Botox or a little, fill, a little something, get rid of the brown spots so that they feel more comfortable going, um, meeting their families, um, and it keeps them functioning longer in society. For younger patients may have a flaw they were born with and they can change the card they're dealt with, improve these little flaws and they're empowered and they're happier and their lives are better. So, you know, is the song You're So Vain? It was supposedly written about um, Warren Beatty. Is that true? I, I don't think so because it's just sort of natural for us to care somewhat about how we look and how others look. So you, I don't want you to feel guilty about this Wanting to look good can actually help us negotiate through life better. And patients are now starting to understand we don't just do this out of vanity. It affects our psychosocial well-being when we do a little Botox, when we do some things. The American Society of Derm Surgery um, had a survey, does a survey every year, and they ask people, why do you do cos cosmetic procedures? And it's always the top three reasons. I want to feel more confident appear more attractive and look as good or as, as young as I feel. So if you feel really good, but you look in the mirror and you look tired, that's kind of depressing. 
but there was a new reason last year they want to do now do something for myself a reward and who doesn't feel like maybe you need a little reward a little jump start after what we've all been through one of the easiest things is Botox because many studies have shown that Botox improves symptoms of depression even within eight weeks. And there are large clinical trials now because Botox somehow affects depression, affects post-traumatic stress syndrome. And they think that there's this facial feedback hypothesis where the external expressions that we're able to convey kind of signal back to the emotional center of our brain and we feel happier. I know when I receive Botox and I'm walking back to my car, it's like, I feel kind of happier. I, I, it does make me a little happier. Fillers also can give a sense of well-being and all of our procedures. Many studies show after fillers, after lasers, there are improvement in quality of life and self-esteem. And there was a recent study where 86% of patients who had a lip filler felt more attractive. So now that you know, it's kind of natural to, to care a little bit about how we look, um, what are some steps we can take from all this? And I think for 2021, we wanna strive, you know, we don't need to look like a movie star, but we wanna strive for a vibrant, a healthy, a natural and an attractive look. So I've kind of identified four areas I wanted to talk about, about what we could do. One, we wanna erase things that look negative about our faces um, so that we don't convey that to others so that others feel better being around us. We want healthy, radiant skin because that looks, that just makes us look more, again, more healthy and, and happy. If we have some features, we can do just a little tiny, we call them instead of treatments, tweakments, tweakments. Just tweak a little bit of your good features or, or minimize your bad features and uh, you'll be more attractive and with something kind of easy. And then we should look and be as fit as we can because that's part of being healthy and living a good life. So we should all look like her, but not really. I, I think that we shouldn't strive for too much. We need to have realistic goals where we kind of look like our best selves. We don't have to you know, take 20 years off but improve those things, the, the things that help the mood, the health, the, the vibrancy of your appearance. Um, because they've actually shown in some studies that people that are super beautiful are not as happy as the rest of us sort of more average people. So how should we rejuvenate? Should we start with baby steps or go big? Well, that is kind of a personal decision um, this is my son going big on a, a, a wave. Um, so some people like to just do something big all at once and others would rather take just a little baby step. So if you take baby steps, you'll look good. If you do a little bit more, better. And a big step will, will obviously make you look your best, but usually have a little bit more downtime. So we always want to identify the problems, weigh the risks and benefits, and then um, think about how much downtime we have. But right now is a key time where we have some time to heal. Last Friday, for example, I thought I'm not doing anything for our long weekend. So I did a Fraxel Duel. I have a bunch of makeup on, but I'm kind of peely. But I just thought I'm going to do something because no one's going to see me. And I'll show you what it looks like as it heals. And it's just Nice, we, I could put a mask on and go, and go out um, and some sunglasses. So we, we do have time to heal from things right now, which is um, important. So I'm gonna first talk about this first area, erasing negative emotions. Because as we age, as we're stressed out, we look mad, sad, tired, and we don't wanna look that way. So we're, we're, I'm gonna talk about the steps um, that will help um, correct those things. So first, looking kind of angry, um, it's sort of a no-brainer to do a little bit of Botox or one of the other neuromodulators. Botox, Dysport, Xeomin, Juro, they're all good. And when you come in, we help you decide which one you want. But if you treat the 11s, these muscles that make you look kind of mad, 
you suddenly look calmer, happier, smoother, better, younger. So that's all good with a quick office treatment. Sometimes if you have a deep line at rest, we will also want to put a little bit of filler in that because you can't quite get rid of that if you let it go on so long that the line is sort of really etched in. So then we'll put a little bit of filler on the same time. Now, many of millennials and people in their 30s are starting younger because we can prevent the progression of the line. So we call this prejuvenation. So kind of preventing things from getting worse is also a key thing um, that's important to do. Some maintenance, a little, this, and this is one of the easiest steps is Botox. We can eliminate sort of a worried forehead with some Botox and smooth it out. Um, that's what this woman had. Now you notice there's still a few little wrinkles in there. She has a very low brow. And if I wipe out every single wrinkle of her forehead, her brow is gonna hang down and she'll look angry. So we usually wanna lift the brow, not lower it. So sometimes we have to leave a few lines. If that was still bothering her, I could put a little bit of filler in there as well. With Botox also, we can kind of treat the downturning corners that make us look sad. So a little bit of Botox in this muscle, it's called the depressor annuli oris. And when we immobilize that muscle, it can't pull our mouth corners down and we look a little happier. And what about looking tired? I had a patient today, she said, I came in because my coworker said, are you tired? And I wasn't tired at all. So what people are asking you, are you tired? Um, you know, one, I, don't, I think that's a rude question. Don't ask someone that question. But if you feel tired yourself, it's usually from these dark circles, from this hollow look there. And we just put a little um, filler under there and it brightens the eyes and brightens the mood. And this, this will last close to a year oftentimes. The first time maybe eight months and it builds up. I, I've had it many times under my eyes and now it's been probably two years. After several sessions, it'll really stay under your eyes um, nicely. And we also probably put a little Botox in this area on her because you can see the brow is lifted. We can get the Botox brow lift when we uh, do that. Here's another patient had so the tear troughs filled for fatigue. A lot of men do this procedure. And when you're wearing your mask, still, this is a great procedure to do because then at least you look better from the mask up. And usually there's no bruising. Another thing that makes us look tired is the brow falling, as I mentioned with Botox. So here on the, um, uh, well, this older woman, we did some uh, Althera above the brow and that will tighten and lift the brow. Now, Althera is an energy device that can be used on the whole face for tightening, but sometimes we just wanna go for one area when you're feeling just tired. So you do some Althera, a little bit of Botox, and you keep the brow up and you uh, look less tired. Um, we can also use Thermage or, or laser around the eye if the upper eyelid is feeling droopy and making you feel tired. So this therm these two procedures have absolutely no downtime, but they take a few months to take effect. So thinking ahead to taking the mask off, some of these things that take a while to heal, you might wanna do them in the next you know, two, three months. So by the time we are out at weddings and other um, um, activities, we, we look good. So this is the Botox brow lift, and obviously it can help with crinkles around the eyes and prevent them from getting worse. So also besides Botox, fillers are often used around the mouth for that downturning mouth and the shadowing. Shadows make us look kind of um, depressed or negative. Um, so taking some shadows out, we try to soften the lines, not erase them perk up the corners of the mouth, this is without even doing anything in the lips, um, can really help that downturning mouth. Sometimes I will put, do the picket fence where I put some filler up this way on the side of your face, I'm showing on my own face, and that will lift up the corners too. So we have several tricks up our sleeves with fillers. And the last thing that can take away negative 
um, emotions and improve things that really bother you. Like sometimes patients say, I just cannot stand this. If you have something you can't stand, then every day you're looking at that feature, just do something about it and it, it makes you happy. So a lot of people hate their jowls. And one easy thing we can do is Kybella injections in the jowl to um, slowly make them smaller. Usually two or three treatments are needed. Or how about this patient? She didn't like her smile because it showed it was a gummy smile. A little bit of Botox around the nose really smooths this out. Some people hate their necks. And you see this when you're on the Zoom call, you're like, oh my God, look at all those lines on my neck. And we can soften these with filler or other devices. And then other things that make us kind of feel down are the sagging. And so anything that kind of lifts your face and neck will lift your spirits. Sometimes we use fillers in the cheeks and temples along the jawline to lift up the face. If you think she has a heavy face, she doesn't really need filler but put in the right place, it makes it more delicate. It makes it look like a thinner, lighter face, especially in the lower jawline area. Or we use threads. This is something relatively new. I've been doing this for about three or four years now, but these were sort of simple to put them in. Um, you can hide for a few days. It might, you might see a little bit of swelling, so you can hide that with your mask. And then six, three, six months later, it keeps getting better and better and lifts more and more. So um, the silhouette insta lift is my favorite way to do the threads. I love these. And it's just a way to take the heaviness off the lower face, which many of my patients complain about. And if you're seeing the neck on the Zoom call, it's like, oh, get me in there. I want to do this. Sometimes we just do liposculpture on the neck. And this is... Um, uh, it's three months later, it'll look better at one month, two months, three months, so nice. And this, this will last for seven, 10 years. Um, sometimes we like to tighten the skin also. And you can see that she had no jawline. She had no definition. The, the face kind of went directly into the neck. And so with Thermi to tighten and some micro lipo, we got her a lot of definition on the neck. Or we hear same treatment, but we took a little bit of jowl fat out as well. So you can get rid of those little jowls with this procedure. And men like this because although we can't tighten 100%, there's no facelift scar. Um, and men have short hair, so facelifts sometimes look terrible. We could add a little bit of filler along his jawline and get that neck up a little bit more. But this looks so much better. And again, it will last for a long time. You can also see we did some laser for brown spots and redness on the neck. So that just looks much better. And even if you're 68, 78, 88, we still can do this procedure on the neck and get a lot of good improvement without surgery. So sometimes patients are surprised how much retraction we get. The skin will recoil nicely for us. And we can take some of the fat, put it in the chin, and get even a better jawline. Because her chin was a little bit recessed, as you see here. And this I published in 2004. So we have a lot of experience in our practice with all sorts of different procedures. OK, now most of you said one of the main things you want to do is get glowing, clear, radiant skin. And I must say, I feel like my skin looks so much better since I did that laser last week. And I know it's going to look even better in a couple of weeks. And in, in Nancy Etcoff's book, Survival of the Prettiest, if you ask all the cultures what's beautiful, they all have different opinions. But the one thing all cultures agree on is that flawless skin is a most universally desired feature of beauty. So, so humans like clear skin, not sallow, blotchy red, wrinkled, folded skin, brown spots. It's nice to have clear skin. And we can do this fairly easily. This is just with the intense pulse light and a good topical program. And we help you decide which products are going to work well with your procedure. This has no downtime, this intense pulse light, but the brown spots will look a little darker. And this takes two, three, 
sometimes four treatments to get it. You see, we got a little bit on the left cheek, but it still needs some treatment. So this is a series of treatments with very little downtime, it takes five, 10 minutes. Another um, intense pulse light with three treatments. And a lot of those brown spots, it's just more clear, nice skin. This is great for blotchiness. And this woman had something unusual, the white spots um, from sun damage. And we were able to clear that mostly here. She's got some numbing cream on just with the IPL combined with the uh, clear and brilliant Braxel laser. That laser has no downtime and we sometimes use it to push the IPL or use it for melasma blotchy pigment a lot. And this is the Pico laser, which is very safe on all skin types. This is just one treatment. So you think, I don't have time. I, and this has essentially no downtime either, very little downtime makeup on the next day. So this is one month later with just one treatment and you get rid of a lot of the spots in the skin, dark spots on the forehead. This skin just looks much better. And we can do maybe one more in a few months if we want to. <clears throat> this is someone I had Fraxel Dual, where you see at day one, day two, day three, you look kind of crusty. And I usually do it stronger than that. So at day four and five, I was still kind of crusty and I'm on day six now and it's all starting to peel off. And this is the kind of result you're going to have. But with this laser, you can still wear a mask and go out. It's really not um, much downtime. No one commented that I looked horrible. Um, but if you go a little stronger and do a fractional CO2, like a Fraxel Repair or the Active Deep FX that we have both of those in our office, there's many of these on the market, you'll usually look pretty crusty and you might want to hide out. Look at day three, she's very crusty. Um, but this will tighten the skin and tighten around the eyes. Um, if you want tightening and wrinkle correction, we have to get into the CO2 lasers. Um, this um, gentleman had a lot of sun damage and skin cancer, precancers. So for healthier skin, so if you tell me, oh, I've had some skin cancers, some precancers, then we'll do the PDT, photodynamic therapy, where we put a solution on the face, let it sit for an hour, hour and a half, and that will soak into skin cancer. It'll track down into hair follicles and into sebaceous glands. So this can also help acne and rosacea. And then we take a laser and we treat, see those big veins on his nose? Those are almost gone with just one treatment, almost gone. And a lot of his brown spots, he just has much healthier skin and way fewer precancers. So someone who gets a lot of precancers will do this once every three years. And if he wanted to get rid of the rest of the little red spots or brown, we might just do an IPL. Where this man who is very, very red, we're able to knock all that down with photodynamic therapy. Now, if you have a lot of wrinkles or you want to really tighten the face, then going big, taking that big wave, that big step is with fully ablative CO2 resurfacing. We call this our take 10 laser. And here it is. I'm doing this on a patient. The patients are completely numb and a little bit sedated for this. But you can see the laser on the skin. And while we're working, we can actually see it just tighten. And I go right along the edge of the lip to get some definition and all those horrible lines that we hate around the eyes, around the mouth or eyes. Um, and this will take about two weeks to heal. And then you kind of red actually for about four to six weeks. Sometimes if you're darker, kind of olivey, you'll, you'll turn a little brownish, but you can cover it with makeup. But this is a, a big step because it takes a while to heal, but it's a big result and it lasts a very long time. I had one of these about 20 years ago and I've never needed to do it again. Now I can just do light lasers. So um, this not only you can see around the mouth how it just tightens the skin or opens up the eyes, tightens the eyelids. So we love the results of this, but it does take, you know, give yourself at least 10 days kind of out of the limelight, you're staying home. And then the, she's a month out and still a little blotchy, but with makeup, she can cover that up until it fades. 
and it always does fade. You know, people that have been out in the sun, we just get the skin much more peaches and cream, much healthier. You look just like yourself, only years younger because you have, don't have all that sun damage. She was younger here when she did this, but now her face, her whole facial envelope is tighter and intervening early, it will slow down aging for her and keep the eyelids and the area around the mouth much tighter. So that's it for the skin. And now let me just check my time. I'm not going to take a, probably about 10, 15 minutes more. So we have time for questions. So the third category is, you know, jazz it up a little. Just do some easy beauty tweaklets, we call it. Um, there's some simple things you can do. And it just kind of makes you happy to make things look better. She had kind of a crooked smile. She had had an injury on the right side and with some carefully placed Botox, we were able to smooth out the pulling of the chin on her right side and smooth out her smile so she has a prettier smile. We can do the Botox lip flip. If the top lip will often try to roll in and get flatter and kind of sucked in, uh, just four little dots of Botox will flip it up and make it look better um, without any filler. We've talked about the gummy smile, how that really improves the appearance of the smile. That's so, that's so easy to do. And you may not know about this. The, the nose starts tipping down a little bit. A little bit of Botox at the base will lift the nose up. And especially with the nose two or three millimeters higher, makes a big difference on someone's appearance. It's kind of shocking. We also put filler along the nose. Now I might, I think my um, photo is kind of hiding the after picture, but we put a little filler along the um, area. She has a little bump on her nose that bothers her um, and a little filler above and below will straighten the nose. So we have some little tricks on the nose, um, lifting the tip or um, using the uh, Botox to get a nice straighter nose, changing the shape very simply. Now, if you're, if you're on a Zoom call and you see all these horrible um, bands on your neck, that we can fix with Botox. And many people don't realize that. They're not allowed to advertise uh, the company uh, that, they, that this Botox or Xeomin or, or, or Dyspart works well for these bands until we have FDA approval. And those studies are underway and, but we've been doing this for years. Many times we, we often, all of the cosmetic um, dermatologists and, and people involved in this treatment use things off label and we know it's very, very safe, but you can make the neck much smoother with a little bit of Botox. And if you think, gee, I can only do one thing and I just wanna look a little prettier, consider doing your lips. Even if you don't think they're too bad, just adding a little bit to the lips is such a prettier look. I resisted it for the longest time. And I have, I just started maybe a couple years ago, just put a little bit in the lips and it just looks better. This is one syringe of wrestling kiss. And she just sort of has a little, a little more fun to her lip, a little bit more fullness. So many people are afraid to do the lips because they think they'll look too big and too fake. This is wrestling kiss. This is the filler that is going to be raffled off today. So if you think, I never want to do my lips, you might reconsider because it can be very subtle. This is Juvederm, where we put it around her mouth and a little bit in the lips because her lips were rolling in and her actual lip mouth looked too narrow. So we can widen it and just add a little bit so it's a prettier look. Or just a subtle look. Or you can go bigger um, like this younger woman where she, we did the, um, it's called the keyhole pout, where there's just a little bit of pout, um, but it's prettier and it's fun and it's not permanent. So we can play with our lips and just make them uh, a little prettier. The other thing to do is in, that's fairly easy is enhancing your cheek, because not only will that help the beauty, the light reflex, but it will lift the mouth area and pull back. This woman had actually very full cheeks, but we use Sculptra around the cheeks and to the side of the cheek 
to pull her face back and lift the face. So we don't always put it exactly in the cheek. We don't wanna to get too giant of an apple in the cheek. I think that was a mistake. Many people are overfilled there and we don't wanna do that. Where this patient maybe had filler in that area, but then was empty around it. So a lot of times what we're doing is just balancing the face with a little bit of filler. Here, it was in front of her ear and that extended her jawline that pulled the jawline back. It lifted the corner of her mouth without touching anything around the mouth. And this doesn't take a lot of filler. So you might not know there are these easy sort of treatments to look and feel a little prettier, which makes us feel like a pair of new shoes. It just makes you feel happy. So lastly, we want to look and feel fit. Um, I know there's the pan pandemic pounds, the COVID-15, whatever you want to call it. Many of us have areas that have gotten a little bit out of shape. And so this is cool sculpting where we can take the fat and freeze it. You just sit in a chair and about three months later, you see the result that this probably was two treatments because that's a pretty big tummy to get in just one. But um, with two treatments, you can get that down. This is one treatment. And we do use a Z-Wave. You can see that little bulge on her hip is way better. One cool sculpting treatment will reduce about 25 to 30% of the fat, but that's enough to make you feel better in your clothes, to reduce a roll. We use this on the arms, the tummy, the love handles, the neck occasionally, the outer thighs. So this has a lot of applications. If you don't want surgery, you just sit in a chair and read, you can get a lot of fat removed. Not as much as liposuction, but like this bra fat, it does pretty well and it even tightens the skin up. So we get tightening um, to some degree. But if we really want to get, like here I did lipo, her upper lower abdomen, you can see sort of the back. We got the, her back and her flank smaller. And this is just in one month. So with tumescent liposuction, we see the results sooner. We take more fat out, obviously, and it's just sort of a one and done. Many times we help you decide at the time of your consult what would be better. And sometimes lipo is, tumescent liposuction is less expensive because then going through several sessions of the cool sculpting. This is not really that big of a procedure. We do sedate you, but not general anesthesia. You can drive the next day. You wear a girdle for about a week and you're sore, but not that bad. So it's, um, it's a procedure, but it's not, it's kind of a well-tolerated one where we can really sculpt the waist, get a 360 degree waist, um, get a nice flat tummy. And here is a month later, you see she had a lot of skin hanging and already it's pulled up. And in another couple months, she'll have the full result, but even in a month, you see so much good skin retraction. Sometimes we use a laser or a thermi procedure to get even more skin tightening, but usually we don't need to. This is a love handle. Um, and you see without any tightening, just like tumescent liposculpture, that's the key. The small cannulas that we use preserve the architecture of the skin and the skin will pull in so nicely. And um, here even, an older patient who was losing her waist now has that waist again. Or a big saddlebag, she just couldn't fit into jeans. Um, they said you can really reshape your body with this. And this is from a study. These before and afters are taken seven to 15 years after liposuction. Dr. Goldman and I have been doing lipo for a long time. And so we looked at patients up to 15 years ago. We invited patients back, we took photos, and if you could keep your weight within about five, 10 pounds, you would still retain the result of the lipo. So that was pretty exciting that how long it lasts. Now, lastly, I'm gonna mention the cool tone device because this is a device that has helped me during the pandemic feel more fit. It contracts your muscles in a half hour. It does about 30,000 or 20,000 sit-ups. And we also use this on the um, buttock 
and it really makes you stronger. I like to hike, and you can use it on the thighs too. I like to hike and run, and it really hears me getting it. I, I don't have the video uh, going, but it's a, a painless, it feels kind of weird when you're getting it, but you do four treatments and then a booster every so often. So I did a booster in uh, March when we were closed down, and I did another one in January, and it just really helps your fitness, and it, it can help your abdomen just look tighter. This I wish this was my abdomen. It's not, but um, but uh, it, it can tighten the skin and reduce about 15, 18% of fat. Lastly, I'll mention combination treatments. So we often don't do just one of these. We do a little bit of staging of treatments along the way. So we're treating all the tissue levels, getting good, better, and best. So you might start out with a little tweakment in 2021, and then maybe do a little laser, then maybe a little lipo, and just combine and, and just feel better about how things, how you're aging and how you're feeling this year. So then we don't overdo with any one modality. So if you just try to fill everything or Botox everything, you'll look unnatural. So it's nice to kind of rotate and combine treatments. This woman had threads in her face and some filler in her lips and it's just, she looks prettier. You'll notice that the sutures, they don't just pull back, they redistribute the volume. So under her eyes look so much better just by lifting her cheek back up and placing it. And her neck looks better just by lifting her face. So, um, and we add a little prettiness element with some Botox. She, uh, she probably gets Botox, does her lips every now and then, and things are looking good. Or when we resurface, we often can do the neck at the same time. So we get a nice neck, nice improvement in the jowl and get nice clear skin. Um, so remember that masks can hide the healing stage, which is good um, and that we have more downtime right now. So now is a good time. But how do you, exactly do you choose? I've talked about a zillion things and um, 45 minutes. Well, that's where we come in. We'll help you decide. You come in for a, a comprehensive consultation. You know, tell us what is really bothering you the most. Then I'll kind of help you talk about what would I think are good ideas, balance it with how much downtime, and come up with a, a plan um, about what we might do that day or over a period of the year. So that's what we're supposed to to help you with and that's what we want to help you with. So I'll leave you with these words. This motto is look better, feel better, and live better because we're humans and that's that's how we feel about ourselves. And in 2021 is a good time to start. So thank you very much for listening and we have 15 minutes for questions. So I'm excited about this. Um, you can find me on my Instagram at Kimberly Butterwick um, at Instagram, or um, that's our office phone and information, and, and Risa will provide you with other information. So thanks a lot, Risa, and thank Great. you. Friends. Thank you so much, Dr. Butterwick. Everyone's clapping mm -hmm. silently. Um, that was great and so much information. I hope you all appreciated it. Um, this is recorded and I know she shared a lot of details. So nice. we will be sending this out to you all again so you can review the recording. Um, when you were talking about how you looked in the in your uh, lecture photo, Dr. Butterwick, a lot of people started commenting that you look very beautiful today. Yeah, it's the lighting. I've got this big ring light on me. <laughs> the best thing. <laughs> yes, thank goodness. <laughs> so anyways, um, at this time, we do have some questions already. If anyone Oops. else would like, this is the time. Oh, sorry. Oh, now the light went out here. Let me put it back up. So um, if you guys would like to start entering any questions into the Q&A that you have for Dr. Butterwick, this is the time. She's at your disposal. Um, I am going to just remove this. Um, Let's see. Screen sharing. Oh, the light went out. That's what happened. Let me get that ring light back on. Oh, uh, there we go. All right. So 
Here we go. So um, let's see. Does old therapy help mild to um, ptosis in one eye? Uh, well, that's a good question. Ptosis um, is often in the eyelid muscle, not in the forehead. So if it's mild and you, if you lift your forehead and it looks better, old therapy will help. But sometimes true ptosis means your eyelid has dropped a little bit and it's covering part of your pupil. So if you can't see your whole pupil, you have true ptosis and there's really only a surgical correction for that. But a lot of people, ptosis means dropping. And if you put Botox too close to the eyelid, you can drop the lid. Um, or too much in the forehead, you can drop it and you can cause ptosis. Um, and so uh, all therapy would help that, but all therapy can help lift our, our brow. And there's such a thing as eyebrow ptosis and it, it does help that. I think it's a really good thing. I had a patient this week who said, everyone in his family has a really low dropped brow and, and his is starting that way. I said, well, if you do an Othera, which is, if you do it just above the brow, it takes like 10 minutes. If we do that every other year, in the next 10 years, your brow is going to look the same or better than it does today. And if you don't, you look at your family members and you can see what it's going to look like. So many of our things that we do are just to kind of preserve how we look, not change or go back so many years, but just slow down aging and look better. Great, thank you. All right, so um, I missed the part about the eyebrow lift. Can you mention it again? The eyebrow, is that a, a question? Or? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's different ways to lift the brow if you feel like your brows are getting heavy. The easiest way is the Botox brow lift, where we put a little in the center, a little on either side, and the brow will actually lift up because those muscles pull the brow down. But many times we lose volume in the temple. And when we put some volume there, the brow will go up and, it, and your cheek will go up a little bit. So some volume out in the temple area is a nice way to lift the brow. And I'll even sneak some up in the forehead because I had a lot of sneaky tricks and up above the ear and that can lift the um, the whole brow and forehead. Now, Thera and Thermage are, are two really good tightening devices. And it's good to do something to tighten the envelope of the skin every, you know, some people do it every year once you get past like 55 or so or 50. Some people do it every other year starting maybe late 30s. Um, and that's a way to just keep the skin tight. If you put your face down, you feel like the whole thing's falling, <laughs> then it's time for a little bit of tightening. The Ulthera or Thermage will help with that. Got it. All right, so what helps the pore size? What helps the pore size? That's a very good question. There's not one thing that for sure helps pore size. Um, I think one of the best though is building up more collagen in the skin. And so one of the best things that I've seen is just the intense pulse light. If you laser someone who has super large pores very aggressively, the pores with a strong, super strong CO2, the pores could look bigger. So sometimes people think the most aggressive thing is the best, it's not. IPL, Fraxel fractionated lasers. This one that I had, the Fraxel Dual, they're all combined to help make the pores look smaller and to use uh, something in the retinol family to keep the oil out of the pores, um, some regular facials. So pore size will sometimes be somewhat genetic. They do tend to enlarge as you age but a good topical program and light lasers on a regular basis. So it's nice to do some light lasers regularly, not only for pores, skin quality, but there was just a new study and I think it's so interesting that the cells in our face that make collagen are called fibroblasts. And 
in this study, they showed that people who have regular um, light lasers, and we need lasers because they, they heat the cells. But if you look at those patients two, three years, five years later, they have fewer senescent fibroblasts. That means old ones. So it's sort of like if uh, you left some food out and things get old, the face gets old. But if you do regular maintenance treatments, you won't have as many old cells in your face. And that's actually never been seen or documented before. Interesting. And, <laughs> and good skincare too. <laughs> All right, a lot of questions are coming in. We'll get to a few more, but I wanna make sure we can get to the giveaway before, before six. So um, someone's asking if there's promotions going on. And I will say that we do have a few things right now in the office. Um, right now, um, we have $75 off if you purchase this $125 Jupiterm gift card. That's on the Alley website. I'll pop that in the chat. And we also have uh, buy one Jupiterm, get the second 50% off. And buy two Restylane, get one Restylane kiss free. So there are some good ones and we're always constantly um, trying to, you know, find the best promotions for you guys. So I encourage you to come in and have a consultation. Can they find the promotions on our website? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you and then we also too. sometimes do um, social media exclusive flash promotions. So I encourage you all to follow us on Instagram, which I'll right. post here as well. So here's a good question I think a lot of people are thinking, but are you recommending doing fillers two weeks before or after the COVID vaccine? That's a great question. Um, and actually the CDC came out last week and said, you know what, don't worry about your fillers, just get the vaccine. And that fillers really aren't such an issue. They, uh, it's very, very rare. Um, and it, it seems uh, that the vaccine can cause facial swelling um, I had a, a colleague that she had a couple, the, they both got the vaccine and they both had lip swelling. The wife had a filler in her lip and the husband didn't. But so facial swelling can help it in any case. Some of the longer lasting fillers can show a little bit of a um, swelling with a vaccine. So we usually do recommend two weeks um, on either side of a vaccine. So um, I had a patient, she's going to get her vaccine, you know, like in the next few days. I said, well, come in two weeks and we'll do the, the big filler, the, the lifty filler that lasts longer. But some patients, I've explained how low a risk it is and that we can easily treat it. Um, there's really only been two out of the 15,000 um, patients in the study that it happened to, and it went right down with treatment. So it's not that dangerous. So if you're here and you drove a long way, we will do some of the fillers if we if we uh, agree to take that risk together. But um, I, I, frankly, I have a ton of filler in my face and I've had both vaccines, thank goodness, and no problem. And same with all my colleagues. Great, okay, last question. Um, I'm going to try and combine a few people are asking about IPL. So can IPL be used for melasma, for acne, and then someone else is asking if it will help with any lines or 11s on your forehead? <laughs> yeah, now see, remember I said if you have one tool, it won't fix everything. The IPL do a lot, it can't fix everything. But um, yes, it, we do use it for melasma. We have to use it carefully in darker skin types. And what I typically do is combine the IPL gently on the worst melasma with the Fraxel Clear and Brilliant Permea tip. That is my winning combination for melasma because many lasers can make melasma worse. So you have to uh, be very careful with melasma. So if we do two or three of those with very good skincare that we help you with the regimen, your melasma will definitely get better. Melasma is also very temperamental. It loves to come back. Like I, I always tell the story of a patient. I, we cleared everything up. She went whale watching in the sun, forgot the sunscreen, and a lot of it came back. So after you, after we release you from your laser treatments, we'll make sure your 
you know to use good skin care, you resume that. If you have a little um, uh, deviation like that and it accidentally gets too much sun, um, and then maybe just do a maintenance. That's an easy treatment, a maintenance once a, a year, because not only are you treating a melasma, you're preventing aging of your cells, you're getting more collagen, you're helping your pores. So it does do all that. Does it help acne? Usually not in and of itself. When we're treating acne, we like to do that PDT, photodynamic therapy, where we put the solution on and then we often do the IPL and that will really knock down acne. That's a great treatment. I have one other treatment that's even easier, the isolase treatment for acne. It's a little vacuum that sucks your skin into it, empties the pore, and then delivers a pulse of light like IPL. And that's quite good for acne too. Wow, I have to try that one. Okay. <laughs> so, you don't look like you have acne either. You must have a filter on. <laughs> I do. I love the Zoom filter, but no, mask knee has been real for a lot of yes, us. Yes, yes, definitely. Else struggling with that. I mean, even those of us that work at a dermatology office, it's it's frustrating. Yeah. I I actually um, I'm gonna do photodynamic therapy like you suggested, uh -huh. and I also came in and did a treatment with Farzane, and it actually yes. helped, helped a lot. I love her. Yeah, our esthetician is awesome. Yes. Okay, so it has come to the time. So we have uh, one syringe of Restylane oh, Kiss to give away. So at this time, can you guys please go to the chat and enter in your name and email? And we will use that list to randomly choose a winter, a winner. So I see while while you guys are entering that there, maybe we could get um, one more question in since Dr. Butterwick is here. So we have, uh, which procedure would be best for a droopy eyelid and how does it compare to surgery done for an eyelid? Well, um, if the eyelid is real droopy, then one of the best things that we have is that CO2 laser. If the rest of your skin is pretty good, but just the eyelid area, we can do CO2 around there and a light laser elsewhere so it's all fresh. So CO2 is good if there's a lot of crepey skin but it has the 10 days of downtime. We do have the Thermage Eye Tip, and that will tighten the skin about 30%, which is pretty good. It's uh, a non-invasive tightener, and we put a protective contact in, and we can do it all over the upper and lower lid, and that will tighten it pretty well, too. I also use fillers and Botox fillers to for the deep tear trough and even up under the brow to lift it. And so that can sometimes take up that excess skin. So there's many options when you come in, uh, we help you decide. And if you think, if I think, you know what, the best thing for this patient is surgery, I will tell you that and refer you to some of my favorite surgeons for that. Got it. Thank you so much. So um, I see a lot of you have entered here. I'll keep this open for another minute or two. Um, and just in case you, you didn't get it in, you can always send us an inquiry to our website. But to ensure everyone you know, stays with all confidentiality, I don't wanna say any names out loud on this webinar. So what we'll do is we will review the list and we will contact the winner tomorrow. And if they're comfortable with it, we will share it publicly. But if not, um, the winner will be notified tomorrow personally. Um, and, and if you win, definitely don't be afraid. I'll, I'm, I'm very gentle. We can numb it up really well. And we won't, we can avoid that overfilled, overdone look, or we can create it if you like that look. Yeah, definitely. Dr. Butterwick, um, I have seen so many of her patients and they look so natural and beautiful. Um, you're, you're definitely in good hands if, if you can get it from <laughs> Dr. Butterwick. So, Okay, well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Butterwick, for everyone that tuned in. Thank you so much, everyone. Really glad that you came and joined us and hope to see you in the office. Yes, Bye. definitely. Thank you. And again, if you'd like to schedule a consultation, you can do so on our website with Dr. Butterwick. Um, her, you can schedule right online, even though our office is now closed. Um, and you can also schedule a virtual consultation if that's more comfortable for you and you can get your treatment plan all ready so that when you are vaccinated or comfortable, you can come on in and get your procedures. So, thank you, <laughs> thank so, you much. so much, Risa. Good night. Night. Bye-bye.